Welcome back to Maths in an Empty Classroom with me, Mr Southern. This is part two of the first lesson on kinematics, non-constant acceleration. Uh, the example that I'm about to go through uh, is quite long. Uh, so what I've done at the start of this video, uh, I've provided a screenshot of the full example, uh, which you probably just want to go back, pause, and copy it out so that um, you can understand what I'm going through because I'm not going to have it visually to show you, but I am going to be referring to it. Uh, so we are given that uh, a particle P um, is moving on the x-axis uh, and at time t seconds uh, the displacement, so its position where it is in relation to its starting point, uh, is given by x equals 2t cubed minus 15t squared plus 24t uh, plus 6. Um, so straight away I can tell that this is a non-constant acceleration question uh, because I've been given an equation uh, for the position of the particle. Um, the fact that the acceleration is non-constant means that I'm not allowed to use the SUVAT equations. SUVAT equations are defined as the equations of motion for constant acceleration. As soon as the acceleration is not constant, I can't use SUVAT. So I've got to use calculus. So part A is asking me for the times at which the particle is at rest. Uh, now the particle is at rest, it means it's not moving, uh, which means that its velocity is zero. Uh, so I have an expression for displacement. Uh, to go from displacement to velocity, uh, I need to differentiate. Uh, so my expression for velocity, I'm going to get that by doing dx dt, so differentiating x with respect to t. It's really important that your notation is accurate in this topic. You're differentiating x, and x is in terms of t, so it's dx dt, it's not dy dx really, really important that you get that right. Uh, so when I differentiate that, uh, I get 6t squared minus 30t plus 24, differentiating a term at a time. Now because I want the velocity to equal 0, uh, I'm going to make this equal to 0. Uh, and uh, I'm going to solve that equation. So start off by uh, dividing through by 6 uh, to get t squared minus 5t plus 4 equals 0, which factorises to t minus 1, t minus 4. So my two solutions, my two values for when the particle is at rest are t is 1 and t is 4. So at those two times, uh, the particle is instantaneously at rest, uh, not moving. Uh, what I'm going to do um, before I do part B is uh, I'm just going to jot down the key information that I've got from that, which is the expression for velocity, uh, which is 6t squared minus 30t plus 24. Um, I'm going to need that uh, in part B, uh, because what part B is asking me to do uh, is to find the velocity and speed of p when t equals 3. Uh, so the velocity when t equals 3, I'm simply going to sub t equals 3 into my equation for velocity that I've just found. Uh, so v equals 6 lots of 3 squared minus 30 lots of 3 plus 24. I could help myself out a little bit here, so what's that going to be? 70, yes, it's going to be negative 12. Now, referring to the question is very, very important here. It asks for the velocity and the speed. It implies that they might be two different things, and in this case they are. The velocity of the particle is negative 12 ms to the negative 1. Now, the negative is important because velocity is a vector quantity, so it has both magnitude and direction. That's a direct quote from that terrible, terrible film, Despicable Me. Uh, so the minus is important because it's telling you the direction that it's travelling. So it means at three seconds, it's actually particle is actually moving back towards where it started with a speed of 12 metres per second. So two different answers there. The velocity is negative 12. The sign is important because it tells you the direction. The speed, however, is just 12 metres per second. So read the question very carefully. Um, to work out what you've been asked to do. OK, 
Okay, so part C is asking us for the acceleration when t equals 3. Uh, so what is acceleration? Well, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Uh, so we're going to find dv dt. Uh, so what I need to do is I need to use the equation that I've got for velocity, 6t squared minus 30t plus 24, and I need to differentiate it to get acceleration. Now thinking carefully about what we've got here, we're differentiating v, and our equation has t's in it, so it's with respect to t, uh, and that's going to give me 12t minus 30, which means that my expression for acceleration is 12t minus 30. Because I've been asked for the acceleration when t equals 3, uh, I'm just going to sub in t equals 3 to acceleration. So 12 times 3, take away 30, uh, which gives me 6. Which means the acceleration when t equals 3 is 6, and that's the negative 2 metres per second per second. Right, part D. Uh, part D is asking us for the maximum displacement from O uh, in the first five seconds. And what I'm actually going to do for this uh, is to draw out a quick graph of the displacement of this function here. Now, this is a cubic graph here. It's going to go through the the y-axis, or in this case it's the x-axis for position, it's going to go through this axis here at the point 6, uh, it's going to have a uh, turning point here, and it's going to dip down and have a turning point there, and after 5 seconds uh, it's going to be about here, but I'll, I'll carry it on um, for the, the t-axis here. So in terms of the maximum displacement, what I'm asking is how far is the particle away from O here? And how far is it away from O here? Now, I'm fortunate in that in solving part A, um, finding the uh, values of T when the particle was at rest, I already know the values of T at these two points here. I know that T equals 1 here, and I know that T equals 4 here. Now, how would I have done this question without part A? Well, I would actually have had to know to do part A without being told. So the maximum displacement is the turning point on this graph. So thinking back to the calculus things that we do, finding a maximum or a minimum turning point, you differentiate, you make it equal zero, and you solve. So we found t equals one and t equals four. So what we now need to do is we need to substitute t equals one back into the original equation to find its displacement. Uh, so two lots of one cubed minus 15 lots of one squared plus 24 lots of 1 plus 6, uh, which comes out as 19. If I substitute t equals 4, uh, then x equals uh, 2 lots of 4 cubed minus 15 lots of 4 squared plus 24 lots of 4 uh, plus 6. Uh, which comes out as negative 10. Um, so what that means, uh, the maximum displacement of the particle in that interval is 19, because it's further away uh, from O, the origin, when t is 1, than it is when t is 4. Now, if the question had been asked is for the greatest distance that the particle gets away from O, if this had been a negative number, but the actual value had been larger, we would have been going with this one, and stating it as positive. Uh, however, this one here, we have the solution, which is the maximum displacement is 19 metres. There we go. Job done. Thank you.